it started as a blank canvas. Now we've subdivided the fields, reinstated hedgerows where they used to be, reinstated water meadows, put in grass margins, put in beetle banks and everything. There's an abundance of wildlife. The land was just cropped as one crop and now most years possibly have six different crops plus fallow plus permanent pasture so it's very different to what it used to be. The species that I'm most keen on is, is the grey partridge and when we started off we possibly had a pair of grey partridge and now our winter numbers across the farm would be somewhere around 200. We have numerous pairs of skylark and what could be more English than a skylark singing overhead? It's so easy to pull up hedgerows and fill in dikes and ditches and, and make a, a hundred acre farm into just one field and um, whereas the CRT has uh, got some farms of uh, uh, around 80 or 90 acres with, with 15 or 20 fields and um, there are others which are slightly different but uh, that's the, the variety of crops to suit the variety of wildlife. They're trying to do all that I value in the countryside. They want uh, family farms, uh, they want uh, diversity of crops and they want to show that farming and uh, wildlife can go hand in hand. It's uh, no good somebody talking from the city that all this should happen. It's uh, people have got to see it happening in the countryside. We're losing wildlife and uh, when it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> I think it's objective in terms of producing good quality food in harmony with nature is absolutely spot on and I totally support that. We need to nurture the land, we need to produce sensibly the food that we can, but we need to recognise that land produces far more than just food, vital though food is. I like the Robin's idea of having a charity which was going to farm with wildlife in mind and do both. The attraction is to show that ordinary farming, ordinary farming can work well with wildlife and make a profit. If the farmer can still make a living and a profit and you can still produce good food and everything, what's wrong with having hedges and, and uh, rough pastures and, and all that kind of thing? There's no question the wildlife on on some of the CRT farms, they can prove that it, it benefits. And there's barn owls come back and lark rise, there's, the skylarks have come back, the butterfly population, the bird population, the bowl population. Um, it seems to work. Does farming the CRT way mean we go back to horses and carts and doing things that way? No, it doesn't. At Pierpont Farm we have robots milking the cattle in an amazing way. We have everything as modern and up-to-date as possible. On Lark Rice Farm we have modern combine harvesters cutting many acres a day. It means modern farming, but modern farming that allows space and we make time and we give understanding to the wildlife, the wildlife that shares the land with us. I always imagined and hoped that Mayfields would be a flagship for the Countryside Restoration Trust in as much as we could promote education, teach future generations about the importance of a natural environment, protecting wildlife alongside food production. That's where it was cut off the sheep and that's the end you see out of the sheep. And we're already seeing a large number of school children coming through and it gives me great hope for the future. That's where you've got to watch her is as she comes in behind those sheep. Now she's settling, that's beautiful.
Most of my time these days is spent teaching people how to handle the working sheepdog. It's a skill, it's a heritage skill, a craft, it's somewhere between art and science. And without the sheepdog, the sheep industry would not exist in this country. The whole of the north would be without sheep. So he's one a very important part of modern day agriculture that will never ever be replaced and teaching people the traditional heritage skill of how to manage him as our forebears did is just very rewarding. What colour squirrel do you think this is? Orange. orange. It is a bit orange, it's colder. Anybody know? A red squirrel. It's a red squirrel. A red... And we have a captive breeding programme for red squirrels so the intention is to release the offspring of our captive breeding animals into situations where they can be managed in an, an environment where they're protected at the moment, uh, somewhere that's free of grey squirrels. It's an iconic little animal and you know I think every person in the UK would love to see the red squirrel back in a secure position. One of my earliest memories of, this, of the CRT was a lady walking along a grass margin and as she was walking towards me on one of our open days there was a common blue butterfly fluttering up the grass margin. This had only been established earlier in the year and when she reached me she said that reminds me of when I was a little girl, that's the last time I saw a common blue butterfly. And it, if it wasn't for the CRT, that common blue butterfly wouldn't have been in the middle of what would have been a wheat field. You can attract wildlife by being generous with your land, being generous to the wildlife. This is wildlife friendly farming at its best. We have to leave areas for our wildlife. And if we do, then wildlife has a future. If we cultivate right up to the edge of every field, wildlife has no future at all.